Today you are going to hear some dark, unsettling and of course bloody stories. Stories that you won't be able to forget. Our first dark secret is hidden here at the former Coles Market in the house that probably stood here since Middle Ages. The original name of the house I'm gonna tell you only in the end of the story, but now it's called At Two Cats and it is a restaurant. There was one story that put this restaurant on the front pages of all Czech newspapers. In the early morning of the February 19th, 1981, a cook of the restaurant, Václav Tchaikovsky, was found dead and to the horror of the police and his colleagues, his body was was missing hands. Tchaikovsky was probably killed with a powerful hit on the head and after that his body was mutilated with a butcher's knife, which blade left marks on the floor tile. But the criminals had managed to slip away. Only a few weeks later there was a hand discovered outside of Prague that belonged to Tchaikovsky. But even that didn't help the investigation much. It didn't progress up until 1984. During that time, the story of a murdered cook grew up with legends. Some people would say that he was a gambler that uh, lost some money in playing cards or cheated with cards, but that ended up to be just a lie. I'm surprised that nobody said that he was maybe just a bad cook. If you thought that my joke was stupid, wait to hear the real reason why he was murdered. In 1984, during another investigation, there was a prostitute named Alice who was a witness that confessed that she knew a man who murdered the cook. His name was Yirji Dolezal. Alice also confessed that she provided him an alibi at the time, which allowed him to be removed from the original list of suspects. The waitress of the restaurant at Two Cats also remembered that he showed up three days later after the murder and was kind of sniffing around there. But the very valuable testimony of Alice allowed them to reconstruct the sequence of events that day. That night, Dolezal and his other four accomplices were partying at the nearby street and then they ran out of money. Dolezal suggested that they should take some money from Alice who was working here at the Coles Market, back then a famous prostitution center. But Alice had already gone home and Dolezal suggested that they should rob the restaurant at Two Cats. Now hear me out guys. One of the worst murders in recent Prague's history happened because of one bottle of wine and two packs of cigarettes. Yeah, Dolezal and his group were already on their way out of the restaurant with their miserable loot when one of them accidentally knocked off a chair. Tchaikovsky, the cook who was already in the restaurant for his early morning shift, went to check what the noise was about and that's how he discovered the group. The worst thing was that he recognized all of them because they were the regulars of the restaurant. While he was arguing with them, Dolezal hit him with a metal object on the head and that's how the cook died. Then Dolezal took the butcher's knife and cut off his hands and took them with him. Yuji Dojal already had a pretty nasty criminal record and after he was captured he was diagnosed as a dangerous psychopath. He was given a death penalty but died of cancer before the penalty was carried out. The proof of this terrible murder is still located inside of the restaurant and you can see it on the floor tiles. Well, that was brutal. I think it's time to go somewhere else. But Valerie, what about the original name of the house? Mmm, I see you are an attentive listener, but I think you already know what it was. What was it? At two hands. Can you tell me guys what time it is? Uh-uh, only using this not at all complicated mechanism. If you don't know how to read astronomical clock, you can check out this video where Václav will explain you all about it. Despite its fame, the history of the clock has an ugly side to it because for hundreds of years people believed that it's cursed. I guess Josef Manis, who painted the agricultural calendar of the clock, didn't get the memo because when he finished his most famous art piece, he went crazy. For real. Manis was reportedly warned about the curse of the clock, but he brushed it off because he was a painter. Get it? After he finished the commission for the agricultural calendar, his not great in the first place mental health started to decline. He had trouble forming sentences, his mind was cloudy, and then he also started to lose weight and developed a strange fixation on roses. So one of his patrons decided to send him to Rome to study because they hoped that it would help the situation, but they actually made it worse because when Manis arrived to Rome, he was robbed on his first day and then he was left in a strange city with no money, with no, no 
knowledge of Italian language and with no connections. Then his sister came to rescue him in Rome and she discovered him sitting on the steps of Trevi Fountain, chanting, surrounded by people who were laughing at him. She brought him back to Prague. But then people started to say that they saw Manis circling around the astronomical clock at night just with a candlelight. He died shortly after awards for paralytic dementia, but people who remembered the legend of the clock would of course say that it's the curse that got him. Old Town Square was used for many purposes throughout centuries. It was used for celebrations, for markets, for tournaments, for gatherings of the army, and of course for executions. The most famous execution in this place happened here on 21st of June 1621, where you can see those 27 crosses. Each cross stands for an executed member of the anti-Habsburg uprising. This execution became to be known as the Bloody Theater because it was performed as a demonstrative act. Here's what happens with people who don't agree with us. If you want to know more about this event, you can check out this video we made last summer on its 400 years anniversary. In retrospect, that seems quite bizarre. Remember this unnecessary bloodshed? We want to recreate it for fun. 30 Years War was one of the biggest conflicts between Protestants and Catholics in Europe, and the 27 executed ones were on the Protestant side. They were killed in multiple creative ways, hanged, beheaded, their tongues were ripped out. And if that wasn't enough, some of their heads were placed on the tower of the Charles bridge for approximately a decade. But that is not even the end of the story. The wood that was used for building the gallows was hastily taken from the nearby teen church construction. We'll get there soon. And it was originally meant for building an altar. After the execution, the builders obviously refused to take it back because the wood was soaked with the blood of 27 rebels. But monks from nearby monastery took the wood and used it for building the staircase in a now hospital. Some researchers say that the stairs were preserved and are still inside of this building. These stairs are called Miserere from Miserere me Deus, have mercy on me, O God. Quite a fitting thing to say on the way to a doctor. Our next dark secret is hidden inside of the iconic teen church. Among the tombs of famous aristocrats, you would find the burial place of a 12-year-old Jewish boy whose death made him so famous there were books and theater plays written about him. His name was Shimon Abeles. Despite the fact that Shimon died a long time ago, in 1694, there is still no official version of how he died. Here's what we know for sure. Shimon ran away from his home in the Jewish quarter and came to the Jesuit college and said that he wants to become a Christian. But before his conversion was complete, his father Lazar and another relative took him back to the Jewish quarter. And then the story sort of forks into a Catholic and Jewish version, and both of them are pretty strange. Here's the Catholic version. Out of hatred towards Christians, Lazar killed his son and buried him hastily on the Jewish cemetery. And here's the Jewish version. Shimon was brought home and then he fell down the stairs and died. I think we're missing a few details here. First of all, Jewish boys converting into Catholicism wasn't something unimaginable at that time, as two of the Shimon's friends already did that earlier on, so he most likely heard about it from them. Second of all, the Jesuit college ran a big re-Catholicization campaign, when they highlighted that being a Christian brings certain privileges. For example, you could own land or choose where to live in the city, something that wasn't available to Jewish people at that time. And Shimon already came from quite a rich family, family, but he most likely didn't have a good relationship with his dad. By the way, what happened to him? Lazar and his accomplice Kurnst Handel were sentenced to death, but before the execution was carried out, Lazar hanged himself in the prison cell using the Jewish ritual tassels. And Kurnst Handel became the ultimate scapegoat, because he had to suffer the worst punishment of all, he was broken on a wheel. I guess he couldn't break out of that one. Shimon was ceremonially buried inside of the teen church and his funeral was attended by hundreds of people. Then there was sort of a cult of his persona formed when there were a lot of books and theater plays written about him. But there's one strange detail about this whole story, because it happened 200 years earlier in Italy. Yeah, a similar story happened to a small Jewish boy also called Simon of Trento. Talking about coincidence.
Right now we are at St. James's Church, one of the oldest churches in Prague. This building is actually from Baroque times already, so it's not as old because the original building burned down during the French fire because it was caused by French people. Merci, I guess. But most of the building is not from the original times except few details. And surprisingly, one curious object inside of the church is still hanging at the same place. It is a hand of a thief. Yep. You know what I did there. We started this video with cut-off limbs and we are gonna finish it with cut-off limbs. I don't have so many details about the investigation because the hand was cut off a long time ago in Middle Ages, but I do have a legend for you guys. One night a thief entered the church and as he was trying to steal a beautiful necklace hanging on the statue of the Virgin Mary, the statue came to life, grabbed his hand and he was stuck there up until the morning when the monks discovered him and called for the help from the nearby street where butchers were and you can see where this is going, right? Because butchers decided to punish the thief and they cut off his hand and they hanged it inside of the church to show that you shouldn't steal from there. 